All right, so we're going to do a, a melting point from last week's experiment. So if we look at the first page of last week's experiment, the physical uh, separation lab that we did, we can see, what do you think the crystals in your hand are? Okay, based on solubility, right? That's how you drew that conclusion in the lab report. So if it's benzoic acid, what temperature should it melt at? 70. 64? Not 64, not 70. What? There we are. 122 degrees. It says that on the first page where we have all those properties listed. Is that a physical property or a chemical property? Physical. physical. Awesome. Good. Um, we don't need to debate that one, right? No. Okay. So it's a physical property because melting something doesn't change its chemical makeup. Okay. So who wants to loan me their crystals? Who, who has a lot? I have a lot. Okay. Winner. Are you sure I might have more? Winner. Oh, okay. We don't have to debate though. It's okay. <laughs> so what I have here is this has been drying over the week in your drawer. Okay. Don't snort it. Don't inhale it. It's not good for you. Now I know who to watch. <laughs> I just love how that's the first thing you always say. Don't snort it. Um, that, it's like I have experience or something. Right. <laughs> So what you guys are going to do, these little glass tubes are called capillaries. Does anyone know what the word capillary means? Yeah, it does. You have capillaries in your skin. So it takes the blood from the, like the main, I'm not an A&P professor, but this is what I know. I think I know. It takes the blood from your main sort of source, your veins, and distributes it everywhere. Because all your cells need blood. So capillaries are teeny, teeny, tiny, and they just let liquid flow through. So we're going to use glass capillaries here. They're kind of funky because they have an open end and a closed end. So the closed end is rounded. It looks like a little bead of glass. And the open end is straight-ish. This one's kind of crooked, actually. But, um, it's important to identify the right side before you do this. Because if you try to put the powder in the closed end, it's not going to work. Okay? So the one that's flat is your open end. That's this side. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over, and you just do this thing where you just kind of break up the crystals. You tap, tap, tap. What is it? Nothing. Did you just say something about cocaine? No. <laughs> no, I said paper. Okay. <laughs> so you don't need to fill the whole tube up. All we need is a teeny bit, okay? So who's is this? Josh. Not Josh. Aren't they? Sorry. Josh is over here. <laughs> So this is the open end, and I've just kind of shoved in a little bit of the powder. you got to break up the powder if it's real chunky in order to get it in there. So this much, like about a pinky width. You see it? I'm trying to put something blue against it because my shirt is white. You see it? That's all you need. You don't need to fill up the whole tube. Don't spend 45 minutes in here trying to fill this tube up. It's silly. All we need is a little bit. All right? And then we got to get it down into the bottom. So we're going to take it on a little ride. This one is super tall. We're going to not use that one. I'm not that tall. So what you're going to do is you just drop this little capillary down this tube. And what it's going to do is bounce a couple times. Um, when, I, when I drop one in, I always cover it with my finger up on this end. Only because I have, on a few occasions, had it bounce all the way out and go flying across the room. And i got to do the whole thing again. So I like to do this. You put it in. Make sure that the bottom is down, otherwise it's going to dump all your powder out. Right? So the, the rounded part is down. You just drop it in and cover it up. Sometimes once is enough. This time it wasn't. Okay, you see I have like a little bit in the bottom, but I still got a bunch of in the top. So I'm just going to do it again. You keep doing that until eventually it will all get down in the bottom. Okay? Let's pretend like I was patient and I did that. The next thing you're going to do is put it into one of these. This is called a Digi-Melt. That's the brand name. It helps us to measure melting temperature. That's all it does. So it's basically a heating block. That's this part, the silver part back here. A heating block and a magnifying glass. That's all it really is. Oh, and a thermometer, too. So the thermometer has a digital readout right here. So what we do, I will program them all for you. They're probably messed up because other people use them. So I'll program it for you. So you're going to come up here, and it's going to be around 20 degrees or so. You're going to put your capillary into the melting block, being aware that it might be hot from prior people. So don't, like, touch it. It will burn you, okay? So keep your hands off. There's even a sign that says, caution, hot surface, okay? 
So we put it in. There are three little openings in the heating block. It does not matter which one you pick. You could do three of them at one time if you want, but it's hard to, for everybody to get in there to see, so I recommend not doing that. So you pick one, you put it in there, and when you first look at this, it's going to look a little weird, but you want to check, check it out before you start heating it up so you know what it looks like when it's just a solid. Okay. Then you hit start one time, and the, the red button switches to red light switches to preheat. So this is just like an oven. It's got to get up to a certain temperature before the experiment actually starts. That takes a few minutes. It's going to go up pretty quickly. Once it's up to the temperature that I set it at, it'll have a green light come on that says ready. When that happens, you push the start button again. If you do it before it says ready, it's going to stop and it's going to, and it's going to go back to room temperature. Okay, and then you're going to stand here for like 15 minutes going, it's not doing anything. <laughs> it stinks, okay? So how do we get it to work? What do we have to do? Hit it, wait for it to say start, and then hit it again. Okay, so hit it, wait for it to say ready, and then hit start again. Okay? Wait in between there. You don't want to hit it too soon. Um, then what you're going to do is you just keep an eye in the, in the magnifying glass on it. You're looking for little drops of sweat, like condensation almost. It'll look like the crystals are sweating. At that temperature, whatever it says on here, you're going to write that temperature down, right? So on your report, the very top, there's a little line for the melting point, mm -hmm. okay? A melting point is not a single temperature when we actually measure it. It's actually a range. So the first, the lowest temperature you're going to write down is when it starts to look like sweaty, beads of sort of liquid. It's not water. It's your benzoic acid, but the beads appear first. You write that number down, and then you do hyphen, so that's a range, right? So low to high. So let's say that mine started to sweat at 120.2 degrees. I would go 120.2, hyphen, okay? And then, once the solid is completely melted, so it will look like water, completely colorless, clear, see-through, then I write the final temperature, okay? So let, let's just imagine that mine turned completely melted at like 124. Then I would write 124.0 on the other side of my hyphen. So you're gonna have a range. It is not a single temperature. If that range is really close to 122, then we have some evidence that you actually made pure benzoic acid, okay? If it's way off, like way too high, way too low, then that's probably not what we made, right? Or it's really contaminated if it's too low. One of those two things. Okay, any questions about melting point? Okay, obviously not all of us can do this at the same time. There's four stations. Both partners need to be here observing this because there's going to be some debate about when it's sweating, when it's not, all of that. So both of you need to do it, um, but not all ten groups are going to be in here at once. So throughout the lab, rotate in, write your melting point down, and then once you're finished, turn in the report up front. Okay, you should have everything else done. Right. Any questions about that? Okay, let's go into the regular lab.